Meantime, why don't we do some big story, all right? In our big story tonight, we're going to start off again with the elephant in the room, or more specifically, the elephant in the house. Washington Republican Representative Jamie Herrera Butler continues to be national news, this time because she's standing up for Rep Liz Cheney, which is really no surprise. Both voted to impeach President Trump, two of only 10 House Republicans to do so. And Cheney has kind of taken most of the heat for that decision, considering she's the House GOP conference chair. So this morning, a majority of Republicans voted her out of that position. But Herrera Butler stood up for her, said that she would not vote Cheney out. The Republican Party, far and wide, continues to struggle with life after Trump, in some ways because many of them are still checking for a pulse. While all 50 states have called it, there are still fractions of the GOP warming up the defibrillator paddles for another jolt, and that includes high-ranking members right here in Oregon. I discussed the election and how they're thinking about it now with Herman Bertschuger, former state senator, House Minority Leader, and current vice chair of the Oregon GOP, and started by asking if leadership in our state still thinks that the election was rigged. Well, there's always going to be people that believe that. As a collective body, we really haven't had that detailed of a conversation. I mean, it's obviously there's still a lot of unanswered questions that went on with that election, whether whether the uh, President Trump got the really had the votes or not. I don't know. I do know that there's just a lot of questions that I wish uh, were answered. And maybe over time, I mean, Georgia's still counting votes and how long has it been since the election? So, you know, um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like most of those questions have been pretty well answered. I feel like they've been answered really well, actually. So you you well, can't you can't tell me no right now that the the GOP of Oregon says that Joe Biden legally and lawfully won the election. That that, that still at this point we're still having this discussion. I think there's acknowledgement that he's the president, but I still think that there, there's unanswered questions over the election. And okay, like what? Well, you know, um, about ba ballot harvesting, about mail ballots, uh, all of those kinds of things. You know, we could have a long, long discussion, and I would have to prepare for that discussion, and I'm not really prepared for it right now. Right. I just, I, I, I guess, know, I've heard that the ballot go. harvesting, and that, that we've been haven't we been talking about that? The media has been talking about that on the left and the right, and going into courts and states recounting and having Republicans and Democrats both working together for bipartisan kind of solutions to this. And still, the, the GOP in Oregon is still fighting this fight? I don't think that's our focus right now. I think there's some people that, that it means a lot to them, and that's, that's fine. But you have to admit, Dan, I mean, they're still counting votes in Georgia. So, uh, you know, I'm not... I'm, I don't want to get in a debate whether Biden's president or not. I just I just said that that election had a lot of people scratching their heads. A lot of stuff was going on. And as as a just a citizen sitting back watching the whole thing, it's easy to say I got questions. Now, he mentioned that they're still counting votes in Georgia, Georgia, but I believe that he misspoke there because Georgia is done counting for now. I mean, who knows nowadays? But this was after Georgia did count three separate times with bipartisan oversight, with the results confirmed by their secretary of state, a Republican, and certified by their governor, a Republican, and gave Biden the win as it did since the very beginning all three times. I think that Mr. Bertschuger meant Arizona not Georgia. Arizona is where they are still counting in some way after Republicans in the Senate commissioned an audit. They brought in a private company that is using some very unconventional tactics to actively search for fraud. I mean, they are literally investigating some of the online conspiracy theories hacked, hatched in QAnon chat rooms. They're taking photos, extreme close-ups of these ballots to look for bamboo fibers in the paper to test a conspiracy theory that a plane from South Korea delivered counterfeit ballots to the Phoenix airport after the election. At one point, they were using ultraviolet lights to check for watermarks because QAnon at one point said that Trump secretly watermarked mail ballots to catch people cheating. And keep in mind, keep in mind, this is after the initial count in November and then two extra audits that found no issues of widespread fraud or anything that could change the winner of Arizona.
And on top of all of that, the company doing that work called Cyber Ninjas has a CEO who promoted some of the conspiracy theories about voter fraud on Twitter before taking this job and deleting his account. Democrats in Arizona know about that. They've already sued to stop the audit altogether. And it's clear that that situation is not going to end quietly. The count's supposed to be done on Friday, so we'll see what happens. But I believe that is what Mr. Barrett Sugar meant, I think, when he said they're still counting votes. I know that a lot of you don't like this type of coverage. Some of our more conservative viewers don't like when I talk like this. You think that I'm being mean to Republicans. Teresa said, media in Oregon is so one-sided. How can you be a reporter when you only take one side? And Dina said, I think it would take guts to have actual critical thinking style reporting with both sides considered. Maybe that is the real elephant in the room. But while I appreciate and always invite any type of criticism, this has been kind of confusing to me. I see this coverage as helpful to everybody, helpful to Republicans in Oregon. Don't you want to know this kind of stuff? Like when the party published this referendum and pushed a false flag conspiracy theory after the insurrection that is so untrue, it's almost funny if it wasn't so frightening. I mean, there's not two sides to that story at this point. It has divided the GOP. Elected Republicans spoke out condemning that statement and the GOP leadership who, who crafted it never backed down. The party then selected new GOP leadership who are considered some of the most right-leaning people in the Republican party. And they're in office right now. And the fissure grew. This week, Republicans in the Senate introduced a bill that would force the GOP chairman, Senator Dallas Hurd, to resign from one of those jobs, either as elected post or as the GOP chairman. Is that something that happens in a unified party? Recently, during a vote for a controversial gun bill, some Republicans decided to vote instead of walk out and halt the session. And because of that, some of their constituents tried to organize recalls. They wanted them fired for doing their jobs. Keep in mind, these Republicans didn't vote in favor of the bill. They voted no, they voted against it. They stuck with the values of the party and still some of them had threats on their lives that had to be investigated by state police. Don't you wanna know this stuff? Oregon is about to have a brand new congressional seat for the first time in decades after the new census. All the district lines are about to get redrawn, mix everything up, change the game, possibly. The governor's mansion is about to be up for grabs soon. This reporting seems like important stuff for a minority party to think about. Like, I don't know, who is your front runner? Is it someone who thinks the election was likely a fraud? that Antifa secretly perpetrated the insurrection? Maybe, though I thought conservatives were against participation trophies. Look, if you want a show that tells you how right you are, how awful Democrats are, how they're ruining the state, blaming them for homelessness and riots and masks and Republicans could save the day, there, there are plenty of places for that type of content. Have you been on YouTube? What I wanna know though, is can you tell me what's the party's unified message. You can't. There isn't one. And that matters in politics.